Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. Well, it has been a couple weeks since we have been able to put up an encouraging word for you. A couple things going on here in the Pacific Northwest. We are still under COVID-19 lockdowns. There's a lot less I can do. Can't get out and hike as much. On top of all of that, it has been raining nonstop for the better part of two weeks. So we are in the office for one more week. I pray this will be the last one for a while. Well, our topic for the day is hunger. And this is very interesting because as I've already mentioned, a lot of changes are happening here in the Americas, especially in the Pacific Northwest, where we're still under a quarantine. Because of that, um, things like food distribution, stuff that comes in and out of the groceries, all of that has become strained. A lot of people are concerned that there are going to be shortages this summer, mostly because farmers can't get their produce and their meats and whatnot to the market. So because of that, I'm finding myself, whenever I go shopping, wanting to get a little bit extra to make a bit of a stockpile. This really got me thinking about hunger. And as is always the case, when I have a topic on my mind that I can't seem to shake, I went right to the Word of God to see exactly what the Bible has to say about hunger and what that can do to us. Now, we're going to start off in the book of Mark, but that is a lead into the book of Matthew. I think you'll catch up pretty quick. Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 11, it says this, A voice came out of heaven, you are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit impelled him to go out into the wilderness. Here we are talking about Christ, of course, and the Spirit within him has impelled him to go out into the wilderness. Now this is very interesting because it comes right in between the idea of being forced to do something and being compelled or impelled to do a thing. For example, when I'm in the grocery and there is a deal on packs of bacon or a great deal on fresh fruit, I am impelled to buy more. But I'm not exactly forced to buy more. I just feel this hunger. I don't know about you, but when I think there's going to be a shortage, the hunger just rises in me. I feel me eating more and desiring more. Christ is in a situation where he has been impelled into the wilderness. Now, you may know the passage that's going to be coming up. It is typically thought of as the temptations of Christ not to be confused with the last temptation of Christ, which uh, presumably happened while he was hanging on the cross. This is the temptations. We're only going to focus on the first one, but I thought I'd at least read you the passage so you know where we're going. Matthew chapter 4 says this. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he'd fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So a couple things here. One is... Christ is being led into the desert, led there for a very specific purpose. We find out in Matthew 4 that he was led there specifically to go through his temptations. Now, I want to pause here for a minute because we don't typically think of the Christian life as being led by the Spirit into things that we're going to struggle with. But that's exactly what happens to Christ. And I think it's important for us to realize that whatever your struggle is this week, if it's like mine where I'm stuck at home and I'm trying to figure out exactly how to make all my ends meet when work is less and socialization is less and travel is less, is that the same as being led into the wilderness? Probably not, but it still leads us into all kinds of temptations, and God can use that to further his will in my life. The second thing is what he does immediately is he fasts for 40 
days. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I do resemble someone who does not fast very often. It doesn't go without food very often. I, I live in a fairly privileged society where food is readily available. So the idea of taking food away on purpose for 40 days seems to be very extreme. So when it gets to the end of that 40 days and it says Christ said he then became hungry, I just want to say Duh, of course he became hungry. He's starving 40 days. Now he's got to figure out what to do with that. So the tempter then comes. And he says, if you're really the son of God, right, take these stones and make them into bread. Now, if you had the power to take stone and make it into bread and fill your belly, that would be a massive temptation. Now, I don't actually have that ability to turn a stone into bread. But if I did, it would be massively tempting. So Christ clearly is tempted here, but his response is the thing that blows me away, the thing that I want to leave you with today. He says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, Christ is not saying starve yourself and just read the word of God. What he is saying is there's more to life than just filling our belly, which is a reminder to me. There's more to life than just having a full refrigerator and meeting every one of my human desires, whether they be felt needs or real needs. The same is true for you this week. There is more to life than just doing the bits that you think will make you feel good. But we're actually supposed to be hungry from the very words that come out of the mouth of God. We have them. We call them the 66 books of the Bible. You also are indwelled with the Spirit if you are a believer. Those are the things we are meant to be hungry for. Well, that is my encouragement for you, and that is my question. What do you hunger for this week? No matter what your circumstance is, you can spend a little bit of time in the Word of God this week and let Him indwell you and change you and make you a little bit more like Him and a little less like ourselves. Well, God bless. Don't forget, I'll be back next week. Be encouraged.